Welcome to Film My Run. We are in Devil's Dyke uh, near Brighton today. Uh, reason being that Victoria here uh, has a 50 mile race, the South Downs Way 50 in April. So we're doing a 20 mile training run just to recce the route from here in Devil's Dyke uh, over to Ditchling Beacon and back. Morning. So that's Devil's Dyke. So Victoria's race starts in Worthing and it travels all the way over uh, to uh, Beeding Hill up there. From Beeding Hill, you travel all the way along here to Devil's Dyke and this is the South Downs Way here, look. So this is a big, long climb out of Savilscombe Farm. In Victoria's race, it is about 16 miles in, 34 miles to go. Brighton Half Marathon is taking place today, over there. We're just talking about what you eat on an ultra and quite often I feel a lot better after I've been sick in a 50 or a 100 mile race. When you throw up you feel a lot better. But it's interesting that what comes up when you throw up is an indicator of what you shouldn't try and eat afterwards. I remember, I remember being sick once and all that came up was Red Bull, even though I'd had loads of other stuff. It is weird how your, your stomach can get rid of only the stuff that is causing the problem. What nutrition works for you in one race it might doesn't not. necessarily work in another race of the same distance or elevation. Yeah. I, I often think that depends on the weather. Okay. So if it's hot, you'll eat different things to if it's cold. So that way is Brighton on the A23 and that way is London. Uh, but Victoria's 50 mile run carries on on the South Downs Way and we're now going to head up into Pycom Village by turning right just here. Uh, so we're now climbing out of Pycom. This is Pycom Golf Club here. And it's quite a long, slow drag now up onto the, the beautiful downs at the top here. It's quite long as well, so you can't afford to walk it all. Some of it you do need to try and run a bit. So just over there, you can see uh, Jack and Jill, the windmills. And we're headed up this path here. It's a lot windier uh, on the uh, top of the downs here than we expected it to be today. My hands are cold, even though I've got gloves on. So over there though, we have the North Downs, Beautiful views across there to the north and then to the south we have the city of Brighton and the sea and then we've got these lovely green rolling hills in front of us. So we're just arriving at Ditchling Beacon. Very famous hill in uh, Sussex. Uh, a lot of cyclists like to uh, to climb up the Ditchling Beacon Hill. So here yeah, is a, a cyclist who's just climbed the hill. Well done, buddy. How was it for you? Oh, my God. He just said, oh my God. <laughs> so we're about 10 kilometers into our run. We're, we're gonna do another six kilometers that way. So make it 10 miles and then we'll come back to Devil's Dyke. Hi guys! 
Uh, the South Downs Way is a really popular place to walk and run and ride your bike. And these little places pop up all over the place. So this is one I've never seen before. This is the Pink Pit Stop, uh, which is a cafe uh, kind of, we're about a mile or two from Ditchling Beacon. Um, and the South Downs Way heads up that hill there. My hands are unbelievably cold. Again, another hill that's uh, not steep enough to walk up. We, we really should be running this hill. So we're about 12 kilometers into our run and about 22 miles it would be into the South Downs Way 50 at this stage. If you are enjoying this video, I'd love you to subscribe. I know I don't always say that, but um, I'm not far off 10,000 subscribers now. So if you do want to just click that subscribe button, that'd be great. Help me to get to 10,000 subscribers at some point between now and 2030. <laughs> yeah, you're, sp you're supposed to be a farm girl. You just scared all the sheep. What on earth is she doing? <laughs> uh, so this is a place that sometimes runners go wrong or walkers on the South Downs Way can go wrong uh, because you do not head that way on the, uh, the bridle way. Uh, you actually turn down this path here. So it's a right turn. Um, and a lot of people do not realize that, just carry blindly straight on through. Um, and then eventually, it, yeah, eventually they realize that they've arrived in Lewis um, which is not where you want to be. Uh, you want to be going that way down to, towards Housedean Farm and the A27 road, which is three miles down here. We're not going to get that far. We are going to turn back in a couple of kilometers, but that's why it's always worth wrecking, if you can, some of the routes that you're going to do if you're going to do a race, um, because you just never know these little things. If you are racing, if you want to go as fast as you can and get the best time you can, uh, little navigational errors can often cost you minutes at a time. Uh, so, yeah, if you can get out in wrecky places, it's worth doing. That's why, and also that's why you've got to keep your wits about you. Always keep either like checking your map or your watch. And not necessarily follow the person in front of you. Exactly, don't, yeah, yeah, not necessarily follow the first, bleh. What you just said. Okay, so we've hit 16 kilometers, so that's 10 miles into our run. Uh, we are, we're about a mile, I'd say, from a place called Housedean Farm. And on the South Downs Way 50, that is about 22 miles from home. And that, uh, Housedean Farm is uh, through those woods there, up and over those woods and down, and you'll hit Housedean Farm. And then the South Downs Way 50 goes up, back onto the ridge uh, and all the way along that ridge uh, towards Eastbourne. So we're gonna head back though. This feels a harder effort than it should do. I think it's just this wind, just battling against it. And also I did 21K yesterday. So it's good for my training to be running on tired legs, but it definitely feels a harder effort than it should do. Uh, but we will have the wind behind us on the way back now so so what we always do with these long runs is keep it low heart rate so there's no marathon pace going on here both of us are going to be running the paris marathon uh, soon but we're not doing marathon pace training um, certainly not in these long runs. These long runs are all about keeping the heart rate low. So my heart rate is currently 115 beats per minute, which is in zone one. So very, very easy, relaxed running. And that's what I try and keep most of my long runs to. 
because there's no point if you're doing if you're doing 80 miles a week 60 70 80 miles a week of training you can't bang out fast running all the time you can't bang out heart high heart rate efforts it's just not feasible especially I, uh, especially when you get to a certain age your body doesn't hold up anymore so you've got to keep the runs easy to get the mileage in the problem is with this that you've got two runners whose whose slow easy pace is different and we are we are running at my slow easy pace which actually is a bit more of an effort for Victoria. Victoria has a feature on her watch. We've activated an alert so that every time her heart rate goes over a certain threshold, it beeps at her to tell her to slow down. It doesn't bother Victoria at all, but constantly going off <laughs> really irritates me. <laughs> We're just arriving back at Ditchling Beacon. Very tempting to get an ice cream <laughs> or something at the ice cream van that's just up there. I think we might resist. Still gorgeous sunshine, beautiful views. Still fairly cold though. The wind is behind us, but we can still feel it biting. So from here, it's 10 kilometers back to Devil's Dyke where we've parked the car. So we walk past horses we slow down for dogs and dog walkers. We don't make a fuss. We don't get annoyed. If the dog runs towards us, we just stay calm and relaxed. Everyone shares the trails. So back at Pycombe Golf Course with about 6K to go. Two hills to come, two big hills to climb. So we're on our penultimate climb. We've got this one and then down to Sedlescombe Farm and then one more up to the end. Uh, so this morning I had coffee and I had a bowl of porridge. Sometimes I'll go out and do a run completely fasted. So no food before, just coffee, and no food during the run. Um, this time I did have some porridge before leaving but I haven't had anything to drink or anything to eat for the whole 20 miles and uh, I'm quite happy I don't feel particularly hungry I don't feel that I'm lacking energy but I I am quite well fat adapted now, Victoria is not so well fat adapted and has brought or did bring a snack a bar with her and has also got water unfortunately she then dropped her bar somewhere she doesn't know where she was going to eat it at halfway when we turned around went to get it out and it wasn't there so she's she's kind of had a bit of a mental battle since uh, since we turned around because she was kind of hoping and expecting to have food and she hasn't had food so she's now really struggling and part, part of it is maybe physical because she does need the extra glycogen, the extra energy, but a lot of it is mental because she's had that knockback where she was expecting food and it didn't arrive. Uh, so different nutrition strategies. I'm not suggesting everybody should be fat adapted. 
I'm not suggesting everybody should go out and do a 20 mile run with no food or water, but it works for me. Um, it's a cold day, so I haven't needed to drink really. If, if it was a warm day, I would, I would certainly have been drinking something. But a lot of you will know, if you've seen my sub three marathon video, that I did the first 20 miles of my sub three marathon with no food or water, but that was a very cold day. Anyway, we're just getting to the top of this penultimate climb now. So just one more hill to climb now. If it wasn't for the trees up there, we could see our car. It's, there's some trees just up on the top of the hill there. That's where the car park is for Devil's Dyke. And that's where we are parked. Final push up the hill now. Less than two kilometers to go. And we'll have done our 20 miles for the day. Very nice too. It's been absolutely beautiful. 20 miles in the bag. Doesn't it feel good on a Sunday morning when you finish 20 miles? Although it is actually afternoon now. And we're back, leaving the South Downs Way. And back to the car now, just a couple of hundred meters. We've done 800 meters of climbing and it's taken us four and a half hours to do. And here's the dike, look. There's Devil's Dike. People walking around at the bottom there. And there we are, look, 32.3, four hours, 29 minutes. There we go. So there we are, the car park is a lot busier now than when we arrived. Um, I'd love to go and have a latte in the Devil's Dyke pub there, but uh, I think we have to get back because I've got to do 5K on the treadmill now. Uh, so that is it from us. We've done 20 miles on the South Downs Way. And here we are back at Devil's Dyke. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you are enjoying these videos, please do hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. And we'll see you for another Film My Run next time. Bye bye.